Hello and welcome to the dungeon! My name is Dan and today we're playing Mordheim City of the Damned, which is a video game adaption of the Games Workshop game Mordheim. For those unfamiliar, this is a miniature war game, skirmish base, where you control a, a crew of say 5 to 10 miniatures, maybe more, and you're going around this derelict city looking for Wordstone. What is Wordstone? Well, take a few steps back. In this fantasy setting, which is based on late medieval Germany, there was this prosperous city called Mordheim, and then one day a big giant comet fell on it. Everyone got killed, well, most people got killed, but this Wordstone, which is what the comet was made of, is extremely valuable. As a result, there are various different gangs heading to Mordheim looking for this green stone which you can see over here in the barrels and selling it on to the highest bidder. In this game there are four core warbands but with two more with DLC. In terms of gameplay, think turn-based, think XCOM, a third person perspective set in a crumbling medieval city with all kinds of dangers and horrors lurking around every corner. For Halloween, I thought this would be an appropriate title. So, let's get into it. My warband are vampires. And I've got several different chaps here, including my Count Chocula, my, well, one of my zombies. As you can see, he is missing an arm. And that's because in this game, any wounds that you get from dying or being knocked out, they can be permanently fixed to your character. So, they start off with regular limbs, like this guy, but because he got knocked out in the previous game, he actually lost an arm, which for a zombie I think is quite appropriate. In terms of the different types of warbands, you have the vampires, you have the witch hunters, which are very zealous, uh, lots of pistols, um, lots of fervent close combat abilities, then you've got the mercenaries, which are a bit more flexible, with more long-range abilities. You've got the Sisters of Sigma, think warrior nuns. You've got Ratmen, which is great. And finally you have Chaos, which is all about dark magic and mutations and that kind of good stuff. So, this is, I said, my Vampire Warband. Now, for perspective, I have put a lot of hours into this game. I think close to 300 or thereabouts, and that's because this game doesn't really end. You can keep playing for as long as you want, keep on going back to more time and finding more Wordstone. It does have a bit of a campaign, which I will get into later, but for now, I'll just show you my guys. So here are a couple of ghouls, which are your basic vampire soldiers. They are still alive, technically but somewhat deformed. Then we have this guy who is basically an Igor, so regular human being, a bit diseased maybe, can use a bow which is quite handy. And I got a couple of zombies. There's him, and there's him. Going back to my main guy which is my leader, so every warband has a leader. On the left are various different stats to improve their efficiency, so you've got the obvious hitting harder, being tougher, being faster, um, being first in initiative, which I'll get into later. Uh, you've also got various skills that you can acquire for your guys, but right now I'm, it's a very, um, I'm in the beginning of this campaign, so right now I don't have the, the green stones I need to get skills, which is fine. So, yeah, they're my guys. That's my warband as a whole. So, with this, I have a mercenary warband, which I've got to level 10. This, this warband itself right now is only level 1. I also have a chaos warband at level 5. So, and as I said, in total, that's taken nearly 300 hours. It can be a very, very long game. But for now, let's get into an actual game and I'll show you how it works. So this lady here is basically 
only available during the eight campaign missions, and that's for every single warband. You'll each get your own individual celebrity or super powerful person. So for the Chaos guys, yes, I got this Chaos Sorceress lady, and for the mercenaries, I just got this veteran mercenary. And they are really the only people who communicate to you during this game, and only during campaign missions. I say campaign missions, it's all campaign based, but there is... where is it? Yes. There are certain missions you can take, which will progress the storyline of your particular warband. We're not going to play it right now, mainly because they are extremely long. You can spend an hour or plus just playing the same thing. And one thing I will mention is that this game is permanent Iron Man mode. There is no real quick save function or anything like that. It's all auto save. So if you have a bad mission and half your guys come back dead or dismembered, too bad. You'll have to recruit some more and see what you can do. So let's play a regular mission, and right now I want to try and get more Wordstone, which is the currency in this game. So Wordstone here is exceptional, so I think I'll try this one. Now it is classified as Brutal, which is this game's difficulty setting. So you have this one which is Brutal as well, you've got Normal and Hard. I think they might be easy, but don't quote me on that. And then, even more, you have Lethal. So I'm going to try a Brutal game, and we shall see how we do. Uh, these are who we can bring in, so I've got six guys right now, and they're all healthy. And let's give it a go. Your scouts report to you that a rival warband has been spotted in the area pillaging houses. While they are dispersed and distracted, you deploy your own patrols in the hope of surprising the enemy. So in this mission, I will gain additional benefits if I take out one particular character. Now I think I or mercenaries, but we will find out very shortly. A new round has started. Okay, so first of all, deployment. And this is the third person angle, which I quite like. A bit different from looking at over the top like in XCOM and other games. So let's uh in fact this game has already deployed for me, so we go straight into it. Uh, let's have a look at the map quickly. So these indicators here are my guys, these green stones are what I need for currency, and everything else are just other bits of treasure you can find, which can be gold, which can be weapons, can be potions, all sorts. So I think what I want to do is head to this warp stone bundle right there, and I put a marker, which if I go back will show as a purple beam of light, That's a blue beam, which is my carriage. I uh, can't see it. Maybe it's behind that building there. So let's go for a bit of a wander. Now I have to be careful. Not only is there the enemy warband, but there are various traps, and I've gone as far as I can. So what I'll do now is I, this ghoul will go into ambush. And hang around waiting for someone else to turn up. Okay, my second ghoul. The red beam is the enemy cart, which I can ransack if I want and take some of their stuff, but I think I want... where's he? So he and my zombie are together. Yeah, let's just keep going this way and see what we can come across. So these blue balls you can see below the main guy is how much movement he has. The red ones are things like attack. The green stones you can see on the floor is what I need to prosper in this game. Okay, time for the zombie. Uh, he is north of the map, so... I want him to go this way. So, yep. Yeah. There's my vampire dude. Zombies can move very fast, which is traditional, but they are quite tough. So 
So yes, I'm fighting Witch Hunters, which can be rather nasty, but then again, so can the vampires. Now one issue is that I have to wait for the other, I guess, player, or the AI, to do their move, and then I can do mine. There are ways to speed it up, so it's not that bad. Okay, this zombie, yeah, keep moving. One of the reasons this game can be quite long is that some of it is simply moving around the map, waiting for the enemy to show themselves. In fact, if I look at the map, yes. I know where one guy is, he is hanging around that warp stone. We've got another guy in that area. The skull means I have to try and kill him and take his, um, what's it called? His token of Sigma, that's that one. And the rest are hanging around somewhere. So, um, he, and keep going this way. There's my cat in the distance, you can see where the blue light is. And there is the warp stone. Ah, a trap. Take a bit of damage, and I'm alright. Sometimes they can give you other negative benefits, like losing all your remaining movement. Okay, so I think there is the enemy right there. I'm going to go into ambush. And see what happens. I have a hunch. What can he do? Where is he? Okay, um, one cool thing is that this game has a lot of 3D elements to it with various buildings. In fact, I've got a shot on someone. Who do I have a shot? That red outline there is an enemy. So let's actually, I'm going to try and aim it. Actually, is it worth it? So a regular shot is 90% chance. This is all RNG. Or I can aim for 5% extra. Doesn't affect the damage. No, I'll just shoot regular. Yep, that 23 means it was a hit. Ooh, I can reload with his bow and arrow. And try that again. Fantastic. Well done, I have a hunch. Uh, perception, not really worth it. Just looking for traps, so why not? And he failed to perceive the environment. Well done. But he did a lot of damage with his bow. So can't argue there. Yeah, annoyingly, when you're waiting for the enemy, you're forced into your last guy's perspective, so I, all I can do is spin around him. Okay, let's see what these three guys are going to do. By the way, if you notice, the voiceover at the start of the mission is really cool. I like that guy's voice work and you will hear it very often, particularly if you lose. Oh yeah, so the green filter on this game makes it look very A new gloomy. round has started. I personally don't mind, but some people may think it's a little trap, which is fair enough. Okay, he's coming for the word stone. He's going to ambush. Ha! If you can... I'll, I'll show him again when I get a chance, but uh, kind of funny how arrows just stay on someone's body. Okay, this ghoul needs to join in with the fight. Best way is going down here. There's my vampire. Uh, I could trigger his ambush. And I think I'll do that if I can get close enough. Yep, he's ambushed me, and he hits me first. Nasty. All I can do is hit him back. But as you can see, he has got two arrows sticking in him, courtesy of my uh, Igori guy. So let's hit him back. Now he is a flagellant, which means he will never break. So psychology is quite an important part of this game. If you surround people, as in there's more of you than of him in a battle, then you'll get a very obvious benefit. Likewise, some creatures in this game, including my vampire guy, cause fear. Yet my zombie, I like him, particularly with his severed arm, but he's just so slow. Like, it'll take another turn or two to get into the action, so we'll go into ambush again. 
Right. This ghoul, I think, is going to get some wood stone under his belt. Uh, gather wood stone? Yes. Now, even gathering wood stone can give you... Let's see. He has a warp effect, which I don't know quite sure what it does, but sometimes it can cause damage, make you tougher, give you more movement, take away movement, all kinds of various random abilities. Right, where's he? Either. Let's just go into ambush. So right now, they're ganging up on my ghoul and he might die quite soon due to the damage. But my vampire is here and he is going to help out. So I can either attack the flagellant, which is that guy who got the, uh, the shirt, if I wanted to. Or I can attack his mate there, which has the shield and the mace. And he is more susceptible to a lone test. So I think I'll go for him. No, no, no. I've already started on the flagellant, so I will continue with him and then hopefully get the guy in a turn or two. So whack him! Awesome. Now my leader has more of these red skulls than my regular guy, so he can attack multiple times. Can you take care of him once and for all, Vamp? Yes you can, and he is out of action. He's not dead, he could come back in a later mission. I can't do anything now to do any further damage, but he is out of this particular game. So what I'm going to do now is gather some more wordstone. Yep, I'll have some of that. Now I won't dare take any more because it could take away his movement. But what I will do is go into battle here. Now although I don't have any more skulls, this guy is now surrounded so he may break and run away. Okay, Rag and Bow Man, let's see what you can do. Not a lot. My zombies are just too far away for their good. Is, can he even make it to a word stone? Probably not. Uh, ambush. I have a hunch. He's going to reload. So I could, if I wanted to, try and climb up some of these buildings. In fact, you know, I want to show you climbing because that is a good mechanic. Now can I climb up anywhere? These arrows you can see show that that is where I go if I was to climb down, not up. Um, let's see up the stairs. Now height is also quite important because the higher you are, the more likelihood is of getting an, uh, a shot off. Right now though, he is too far from the action, so he'll just go into overwatch and I'll show you climbing, or falling, in a moment. Okay, let's wait for the enemy now to catch up. As I said, that is a criticism. Uh, he's their leader. He did charge me, but, he, but I was able to dodge it, so well done. Count Dracula. Oh, he's got a big axe. Ah, well done. You missed. Wow, I'm just getting gangbanged here. Now, I don't have to knock out all of their troops to win this game. I a just have to knock out has started. a certain number of them. Uh, top left of the screen, you'll see a blue bar and a red bar. The blue bar is mine, the red bar is the AI's. And when it drops to a certain point, they'll start taking tests. And if they fail, then I've won the round, won the game. Now, what I can do to increase that is I can take care of his leader or I can steal his idol from his cart. His cart is too far away right now, and to be fair, this game is going to end in this big pileup in the middle, so let's see what I can do. Um, in terms of target priority, I think it'll be better if I go for the flagellant, because 
This guy is harder to hit, the guy with the red outline. He's easier. Although he's got more health, he doesn't have a shield. So let's... Ooh, critical! So he's stunned, which is great for me. Stun means he's, as you can see, on his knees, and he can't really do anything for the rest of, well, until he recovers. So let's dodge that. Now, if I wanted to, I could try and... Actually, no, I can't. Never mind. I was going to say, get out of that fight, but no, he's, he's locked in there. Okay, two ghoul for school. Where are you, and what can you do? You are there. And we need him over there, basically. Yeah. So speed is a very important. Without speed, the other guy is going to be like crawling around the map, not able to support each other. So he now should, should be able to get into that fight. If I get closer though, it's going to force an ambush. But it might take some pressure off my other guys, so let's do that. Ambush! Ooh! That was hard. Very hard. Okay, fight back. 69% not great, but it's something. Count- oh, brutal. Yeah, counter-attack. That can happen. Well done for dodging. Okay, Dragon Bow Man. Just get some wood stone. If you can. Yep, that'll do. Even if you lose a game, you can still get wood stone and get experience. You just get more experience and more benefits if you win. Right, he is a great fighter, but he is a little surrounded right now. He's got two opponents that he can go against. I can go against either his leader or this dude here. The leader is probably the better option. He's easier to hit, although I do less damage. And if I can knock the leader out, as I said, I could win this game a little quicker. So I shall do that. Okay, two good hits. Nice one, nice one. I could either parry, which is similar to dodge, except rather than dodging it, I hit him back. But my dodge skill is slightly better, so I'll keep on dodging. Okay, I have a hunch. Let's climb down first of all. 70%, let's see if I do it. Successful. If I hadn't have made that, he would have fallen flat on his face. Which, as well as being painful, is a little embarrassing. Okay, and because they're locked in combat, my percentage of hitting one of their guys has gone down somewhat. So I might have to aim. Um, yeah, let's aim for their leader and try and do some more damage. Good shot, good shot, keep it up. Uh, I can reload. But I can aim now because that requires those blue balls, and I am out of blue balls. So I'm just going to shoot him again. 57% and hope for the best. Nah, you tried. End turn. Okay, this is going to be painful. Smelling salt. Fair enough. Failed my dodge, and will he do more damage? Good, good. Keep missing. Now he's dodging as well. Flagellant is no longer stunned, and he's gonna dodge too. What about his two other guys? Ah, I'm glad that happened, because this game has an issue with its AI and moving to places. Sometimes it doesn't work. Which, for me, is my benefit, but it's still a bug, and it's still a new round sometimes. has started. Okay, so he has got three guys on him, and he's quite low on health. 
Uh, gonna have to just fight him. Good stuff. And I'm gonna have to dodge it. Okay. Can he make it this turn? Please, please, please. Get into the fight. At this point, if I were to hit a trap, that would be most unfortunate. Now, I can charge, which is great, and I'll be charging his leader. Ah, and he dodged it. Typical. End turn. He failed his terror test, great! Which means he does not get to fight. I might still have this. No promises. Good, good. Do that again, please. Excellent. One more, maybe two hits, and his leader is down to the count. Dodge. Right. Dragon Bowman, where are you again? Too far away, that's where you are. To be fair, he may as well just get more wood stone at this point, because he's too slow. By the time he gets there, the fighting will already be over. A bit more. Yep. The stronger your guys are, the more they can carry. So all the stats are quite useful in this game. And can he get one more? Yes, he can. Okay, so he's my Wordstone caddy. If he dies, which I doubt will happen because all the main all the main enemy are over there, then I should be all right. Confirm end. Yes. Okay, I have a hunch. Reload. Aim. Uh, I could potentially knock him out in one shot, so uh, do that. Yep. Well done. Promotion for you. Okay, I think I have this. When you lose a leader, that's quite a heavy blow on your morale. Uh, can you get a better shot? Ooh, 60% on Ruben Leitner. Go for it. Excellent. Man of the match. End turn. I think I might have this. No promises. Slightly unwell is doing alright for himself. He's been dodging like a champion. And now he's dead. I jinxed it. A new round has started. Okay, who next? I think if I concentrate on the Flagellum because he's low on health, if I knock him out, it might make the rest of his warband run away. And he's stunned again! All those arrows he took. Dodge. He passes the arrow test, and I'm going to hit my shot killer. Yeah, you dodge. Okay. Dragon Bone Man. Ugh. Keep running, I guess. As you can see, his blue circle has gotten smaller, so he's even slower now than he was before. And that's because of all the wordstone he got. I've lit as far as I can go is for I don't know, twelve feet in the real world. I don't know, fifteen feet? Not a lot. Not a lot at all. Okay, Chacula. Now annoyingly. I'm not actually in combat with a flagellant on his knees, just this guy here. I could come out of combat, but then I'll lose some of my action points, so I may as well just keep hitting and hope for the best. He's on fire. By the way, you can literally set guys on fire as well in this game. It's quite cool. Or at least give him the burning ailment. I have a hunch. Reload. Yes, if I can kill him, I think I've got this.
and he's out of action too. Okay, I, I don't think that's quite enough to force a morale test just yet, but we shall see. It was, however they passed it. Their two remaining guys are just extremely brave, which is annoying. Sorry, three remaining guys, there's three left. Oh, good dodge for that. Yes, if my, if my leader takes another hit, he's probably going down, and that could affect this mission. A new round has started. Okay. What to do now? I'm doing all right. Let's, get, let's gather some. Uh, let's gather some wood stone. I'm doing all right, but it's not over yet. A charge. He's got. He's taking some damage. Yeah, let's charge him. Good job. And dodge. Yeah, some weird camera angles here. You can see through his head. Okay. He's at 66 health left. 77, 136, so definitely not him. Do more damage to him, and he's easier to hit. So, to be honest, I wish I'd hit that. I definitely wish I'd hit him. Okay. Dodge. Okay, so his circle is slightly bigger now, but he's still too far to do anything useful. Okay, let's see if he can win me this game. Not helpful. Reload and try again. Not bad. Actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do with him. Is get into combat as well, so the enemy has one more target to focus their attacks on. I think the terror test and them failing is the only thing keeping me in the round. Oh, okay. One more hit and my vamp is gone. And he's gone. A new round has started. Quite the close match. But. Uh, damn it. I was doing quite well at the start, but then I just got so many misses that it went against me. Please, please, please. Can he charge anyone? No! I need I need you, Rag and Bone Man, to get in there. Okay, ambush. Maybe someone will come into his path. Okay. He's gonna change his weapon and just whack Alric. Okay, good, good. Do it again and stun him. Can't knock him out in one go. Whether I win or lose depends on if I can take care of this guy here with the big axe or hammer. Can't tell. It's an axe. If he knocks out one more guy, then I'm, then I'm gone. Okay, I might be alright, because Rag and Bone Man is at full health, more or less. Okay, I have, I have a hunch. Stay in there. Okay. He's low on health, but he's still alive. For now. 
A new round has started. Kill Alaric. He's got one job. No! See, this is why I like this game, because 10 situations like this. I have a hunch. Kill Alaric. He's got one job. Okay, okay. I have a hunch. Kill Alaric. Seriously. Kill the fucker. And he's down. Right, what I will do now is I will loot him. And I will take his token of Sigma. Object. So that is what complete. I need to get the bonus loot. Excellent. Can I loot him even more? I can. Um, I'll take his Great Axe because that's worth 10 gold. I'll take this shard. Uh, nothing great there. And stick in the combat. They can parry. Yes! They fail! Okay, mission successful. I took some losses, so let's find out what happens to my knocked out guys. Your performance has validated the trust Count Vlad has placed in you. Demonstrate your loyalty and enjoy the favor of the Von Karsteins. Full recovery, excellent. Nice progress. And you got experience. Good job. So you get more experience the better you do. So surviving is great, completing the optional objective, taking that guy's token. Um, on the dog, which I think is when you're outnumbered, and you get 1 XP for every guy you knock out or take out of action. Full recovery. Good job. He's got a little knife now since his spear got taken, but I'm sure we can get him one. Fantastic. Too cool for school. Gets a bit of XP. Good for him. Tendonitis. Okay. So yes, very interesting injuries. This guy now has tendonitis, so his strength and his max strength have now been reduced by one. Okay. I have a bunch of man of the match. Yes, absolutely most viable member. And Rag and Bowman, who got there in the end. New warriors okay. are available well done. for hire. Yes, yeah, so your warband war itself can also get experience. Stronger. And what that means is you have more slots so you can bring in more guys. Eventually, you'll have a impressive slot which allows you to bring in a really big guy. For me, for the vampires, it's basically a ghoul but oversized, like really huge. You also get ogres. You also get various mutated monster creatures and all sorts of interesting things. So, Warband Management, because they took some damage, I have to pay for their treatment. And because these guys aren't here on the kindness of their hearts, you have to pay your guys. So, your finances is something you have to take note of. So, back to Warband. That is really how you play this game. A lot of missions, a lot of RNG. Sometimes it can go your way, sometimes it won't, and sometimes, like just now, it was extremely close. I do recommend this game if you're into your turn-based tactics. If what you saw just now was a little dry, then that's absolutely fine, um, but that is really how this game will go. The campaign missions I am not a fan of. They are too long, you can't save. If you lose, which is quite often, you have to start it all over again. And like a regular mission, if you take losses, you could potentially have guys die, uh, lose limbs, get tendonitis, all sorts of good stuff. 
amnesia is a terrible one because your guy will literally be confused during the mission and you'll lose his actions if he forgets what he's doing. But you get a lot of personality from your warband. Not from the campaign missions, the actual eight missions where you're trying to help someone get promotion, but your own missions like that, you can you can really customize your guys and their injuries can really give them a lot of character. Speaking of customization, the guys you saw, the vampires, there really isn't a lot of ways to make them different. So he is pale, he is dark. You can go even paler, and that is it. There's not too much for him. Zombies, zombies have two different heads. That's all you get. You can change the color of their clothing and their weaponry, but it's kind of basic. To be fair, the main, the four core mercenary groups, well I say mercenary, the four core warbands, there's a lot more customization. With the mercenaries, there are a lot more heads, there's a lot more different trinkets and whatnot you can give them. And uh, with the chaos ones as well, they're really good because they can get mutations like extra limbs and additional heads and tails, stingers and things of that nature. But on the whole, customizing your guy, in fact I will show you customization here, is limited. He has two different hair colors. You cannot have a blonde vampire. You can even go black or gray. So I go with gray. You only have a single head to work with. Now you can get helmets and you can vary their appearance, which is cool, but there's just not a lot there, and that is a bit of an issue. So as I said, playing the main missions, just day-to-day -day missions of getting Woodstone and playing against another warband is really fun. The best thing is, obviously this game has multiplayer, and that experience becomes fantastic. If you're like talking to someone on Skype or something and you're trying to work out where their guys are, they're trying to work out where your guys are, it can be a really riveting experience. Not to mention, later down the line you get wandering demons. So bloodthirsters, not bloodthirsters, bloodletters, sorry. Uh, demonettes, Nurgle demons and all sorts. These are random guys who will attack either warband and they are brutal, very tough very nasty. Um, you get wandering ogres as well, more traps, just a lot of things to make each mission somewhat memorable. And yeah, I really like it. I whole, wholeheartedly recommend this game to anyone who likes tactics. As I said, it can be a bit dry. Your own warband don't do a lot of talking, in fact, zero talking. All the communication is with your with this type person here. Yeah. They do the talking on story missions and that is it. The story missions, as I said, not a fan. You're basically helping this person get on in life. And that's it. But for a time sink, if you really want to customize your if well, I say customize, if you really want your warband to improve, get better, and there are tons of skills you can do you can get. You can get um a, a melee skill where you hit harder for more points, you can get all kinds of various spells, I'm not even showing you magic, magic is great in this game, you can get maybe one or two sorcerers, they can cast fireballs, they can do uh, nullifying effects, they can do all sorts, so it has a lot to offer, highly recommend. Anyway, I'm going to keep on rambling now, so I may as well call this video here, more time City of the Damned. I really do like it. I'll probably play the other warbands too, and it's a blast. Anyway, that's all for me. If you like this video, then by all means, give me a good comment, or a bad comment if you want, I don't mind, or give me a like, or a sub, and I shall see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.